Thank you. Good evening, everyone. The meeting will come to order. Clerk will note the roll. There is a quorum. Representative Carlson, would you like to move what is probably the last motion for moving minutes of the session? I will so move. And Mr. Chairman, does that make it 100%? I think it does. I think so. You have a perfect rating, Representative Carlson. And, uh, okay, so, uh, but you don't expect we'll meet tomorrow or Saturday or? Um, you know, I guess I don't know what we would meet on, Representative Carlson. I suppose it's always possible. I'm but, not sure uh, what you have in possession right now. Yeah, no, this is actually the last bill that I know of that we have in possession that I would see us needing to move out or expecting to move out. I suppose there's always a possibility of something else when I mean, there are some other bills there, but I am expecting this will be our last meeting. Other than the meeting we, of we the November forecast. Year, we did have a chair years ago that, that where I'm headed with that, that uh, would convene us for a last meeting and he would have pie. Oh, well, all kinds of different pies. I don't know where he bought them, but. Uh, that was several years ago. You know, the committee started in about the mid-80s. All right. Did you bake it Did it? Think about Wayne's son. Uh, sorry, did I give you a hint? Or? Well, you did, but its uh, I don't think I got enough time to bake a pie, and if I did, I don't think you'd want to eat I, it. I don't think that chair uh, baked any pies. Um, but um, yeah, at any rate, um, just thought I would point that out. All right. The other person that would give have a pie was Senator Carl Crony. Oh. Uh, that He didn't care for cake, I don't think. He would always have pie for his birthday celebration when he was in the house in the retiring room. All right. And the other one was Willard Munger. Oh. Would love to have pie. But he was selective in who he would give a piece of pie to. <laughs> and I was fortunate enough to office close to him, so I always got a piece of pie. Representative Carlson, I will. Rate, I think you wanted that motion, so I move approval of the minutes. I will try to. <laughs> I will try to remember when we have the meeting on the November forecast several months from now, which would really be our last meeting, <laughs> to bring some pie. Uh, you're welcome to remind me, uh, but before the meeting, as long as it isn't pie in somebody's face. Yeah. Well, that <laughs> that happened. All right, Representative Carlson moves the minutes of May 14th. Is there any discussion? See none. All in favor of the minutes, say aye. 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 Opposed. A motion prevails. The minutes are approved. So, uh, members, we have uh, one uh, bill before us today. That is House File 3352. I will move House File 3352 be referred to the General Register. And uh, I know there's a number of amendments, but uh, Representative Heintzman, uh, the author. Uh, do you want to uh, review the bill first, or do you want to take up the amendments? What would be your preference? Uh, Mr. Chair, I think it would be nice if we could possibly just do a quick run-through of the bill and then maybe get to the amendments. Okay, sounds good. Uh, please proceed, uh, Representative Heintzman. All right. In the interest of time, uh, I will now turn it over to Director Nash. A director, welcome to the Committee on Ways and Means. Mr. Chair, members, thank you. Again, my name is Becca Nash. I am the director of the Legislative Citizen Commission on Minnesota Resources, the LCCMR. And again, in the interest of time, I will cut straight to the chase. Um, I will do a walkthrough of the bill, and um, you have in your packets um, several pieces of background information. I just want to draw your attention in particular to two of those pieces. The first is the one with the pie charts on it. And this um, at the top has a step-by-step um, -step process of the multi-competitive um, process that all proposals underwent in order to get to you today. This is um, uh, what led to the LCCMAR bill again that you are viewing today. Um, this is followed by a series of tables and charts that show how the appropriations in the bill are broken down according to LCCMAR topic priority. Um, as well as by organization type of the folks who would be doing the work and um, the breakdown of the impact um, within the state of Minnesota. The second handout I want to draw your attention to is the spreadsheet. Um, on the first page is a um, summary by LCCMAR priority topic area of the, the appropriations in terms of dollar amounts, number of recommendations, as well as the percent of the total appropriations being made. Um, on the second page of that handout, 
you'll see a listing of each individual project organized by priority topic area. Um, it provides the project title, the organization, and then the LCCMAR recommended amount compared to the amount that is in um, the bill today. Any changes that have been made are marked accordingly. So Mr. Chair, if it's okay with you, I will focus on the front page of the spreadsheet and just at a very high level go through the appropriation recommendations um, per LCCMAR priority area. Okay. Um, and I should say that in addition to the appropriations in the, in the bill, there is also one statute change, um, some adjustments to previous year's appropriations, and some carry forwards. But starting with section two, which is the appropriations, I'll just go through these section by section. Um, subdivision three is foundational natural resource data and information. This is $7,293,000, 12 recommendations representing about 16% of the total funding. Subdivision four is water resources, $5,275,000, 11 recommendations representing about 12% of the total funds. Subdivision five is technical assistance, outreach, and environmental education, $5,168,000, 12 recommendations representing about 11% of the funds. Subdivision six is aquatic and terrestrial invasive species, $5,760,000, six rec recommendations representing 13% of the funds. Subdivision seven is air quality and renewable energy, $1.2 million, three recommendations representing about 3% of the funds. Subdivision eight is methods to protect or restore land, water, and habitat, $3,519,000, nine recommendations representing about 8% of the funds. Subdivision nine is land acquisition, habitat, and recre recreation. This is $17,439,000, 12 recommendations representing about 38% of the funds. Subdivision 10 is the emerging issues account. This is $39,000, one recommendation representing less than 1% of the funds. And subdivision 11 is contract reimbursement, $135,000, one recommendation representing less than 1% of the funds. And that is the, concludes the appropriations portion of the bill. Well, thank you, Director Nash. Any questions for Director Nash on the bill? Or Representative Heinzman? Uh, well, seeing none, um, I guess, uh, just a minute. Mr. Chair. Okay, um, uh, Director Nash. Uh, Mr. Chair, there, there are some carry forwards and, some, um, and one statute change, if you'd like for me to go through that as well. Uh, sure. Okay, and um, in the bill, um, subdivisions 12 through 18, pages 27 through 35 are conditions of funding. And these are standard um, bill language. So if you've seen LCCMR bills before, this would be the same language. Um, sub subdivision 19 is some carry forwards. These are projects that just need a little bit more time to complete their outcomes. And then in section three of the bill, um, starting page 37, line 12, um, this is adding to statute 116, which is LCCMR's governing statute. And this is a requirement that nonprofit organizations acquiring land with environment and natural resources trust funds um, notify county and town boards before an acquisition of um, land is proposed um, and submitted to the LCCMAR. And then to conclude, sections four and five each include a relatively minor adjustment to prior year's appropriations language. Thank you. All right, well, let's turn to amendments then. Uh, the first amendment we'll take up is the A-10 amendment. Uh, Representative Garofalo moves the A-10 amendment. Uh, Representative Garofalo. Um, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for the presentation. Um, members, this kind of goes back to late last year, uh, early this year. Uh, as part of the reforms that were enacted last year, the legislature passed and Governor Dayton signed into law uh, reform of the renewable development account. Uh, that put it under state control. Instead of the resources being located in the private sector, they're actually located in uh, the bank accounts controlled by the state. And at that time, I wrote a memo to the LCCMR members uh, the citizen members uh, pointing out that in result, in result of this reform that we took, that there should be no projects funded under the renewable energy portion of this, that the proper accounting of this would be under the RDA. 
um, the response from that was to um, not acknowledge the memo or at least make a cursory acknowledgement of it and they put the projects back in and I don't I don't know why they did that I'm not sure I understand the logic of it but in the memo I sent to them I committed to them that if they were to go forward with it I would actively oppose this and I would take these projects out and so mr. chairman that's what I'm doing today and on page 17 um, Item B, item C, uh, removing from the air quality and renewable energy section. And then on page 19, the uh, agricultural weed control. Uh, that's, all three of these were rejected by the legislature last year. And so uh, I've left the development of solar window concentrators for electricity. I've left that in the bill. Um, I could have took it out as well, but um, I'm just going to take out the ones the legislature took out previously. and. Representative uh, Heinzman, I know you, you'll take this in the conference committee and you'll address it as you see fit, but today I would like the committee to remove these and I ask for the committee's support. A discussion to the A-10 Garofalo Amendment. Representative Wilginius. I'm just, uh, I don't understand the rationale between keeping A and taking out C. I'll be there. <laughs> uh, quite the same, but are different ways of approaching the same problem. But I am very curious about the agricultural weed control using autonomous mowers. Um, we know that our farm community um, has, uh, needs help, and one of uh, robotics is clearly coming and uh, being used in all sorts of sectors. Why not our agriculture sector, particularly when we have um, our homegrown Toro uh, interested in working on this along with the University of Minnesota Morris. Uh, so you can't be more homegrown than that. Uh, and the outcome for our farmers uh, seems to be a good one. So I'm just not understanding the rationale for taking this out. Other discussion? Did you want to answer that, uh, Representative Garofalo? Sure. Go ahead, Representative Garofalo. Uh, Mr. Chairman and Representative Aguinius, as I mentioned in my comments, number one, I'm of the opinion that the renewable energy portion of the LCCMR section shouldn't even exist. I mean, after the reforms we were made to the renewable development account, that's exactly what those funds are supposed to be state, supposed to be used for. Um, that's the stated intent. That's the historical intent of it. So what we have here is a um, two projects that are in this uh, this list, and a third project product with la project which last year was funded under this section. It was simply moved to the the latter section, and I I don't know why anyone would be surprised by this. I mean, I even put it in writing to say apply, you know, submit a grant out of the RDA. These resources are available. There's over at the time over 54 million dollars in resources available and it was just chosen it just advocates chose to ignore it i don't know why i don't understand it again this is representative heinzman's bill and how he addresses these in conference will be his choice but i said i was going to take this out i'm not bluffing so we're going to take it out today and hopefully we keep it out uh, going through the rest of the legislative process but if people want to apply for these types of grants for renewable energy they should do it through the legislative process uh, with the renewable development account. If Representative Carlson. I'll, I, I'll yield to uh, Representative Wiginius. Re Representative Wiginius. Well, just one thought here for members. The renewable development account is funded by Excel ratepayers. And um, Excel. Uh, the funding here does not go into Excel territory. It goes into the University of Minnesota Morris. And so there are many people that say um, that the funding from the renewable development account should only be in, spent in Excel territory. This is clearly outside of Excel territory. So appropriately, um, it does seem to me that LCCMR is a good venue for this type of um, innovative work. Representative Carlson. Well, Mr. Chairman, I uh, find uh, the uh, comments by Representative uh, 
Garofalo rather interesting because a single member uh, writes a memo to a commission that is made up of legislators as well as citizens and uh, says that they must uh, not move forward with a project that they were interested in. I, th I think that whole process is rather uh, interesting and extraordinary that a single member would be basically vetoing the input from uh, not only the community that uh, would be advocating it, but uh, if you look at the makeup of the LCCMR, and I served on it for a number of years, it's made up of uh, both legislators and citizens. And I assume that uh, uh, there probably was, well, I don't know, I would be speculating that there, but I would guess that there may have been a fair amount of consensus um, on the part of uh, the LCCMR commission members on uh, moving forward with this project. Uh, I know when I was a uh, member, they had a very elaborate uh, ranking system and so on. And um, there's just a lot of input when they uh, make a decision to, uh, to fund a uh, project. And I think uh, Representative Waginius makes a, uh, a very good point about the purpose of the uh, Renewable, renewable de Development Fund. Um, two of us on this side of the aisle were conferees when that was all set up years ago, uh, Representative Houseman and myself. Um, so uh, I think uh, it was very appropriate for them to move forward. I suspect uh, that uh, knowing the makeup of this committee, the amendment might very well go on, but I don't want it to be uh, left with the feeling that there was consensus that somehow um, the uh, LCCMR was out of order simply because the memo came from a single member of a 201 member body saying this must not be done. I recognize he's a chair. I've been a chair and I have never ever uh, expected this simply because I sent a memo that a state agency or a commission was to behave in a certain way when something was clearly within their jurisdiction. Um, you sent the memo, uh, they responded differently and I think they, they responded appropriately. And I just want to put that on as a matter of record. Uh, Representative Garofalo. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And unless there's no one else, I'll just wrap this up. So um, I do think it's interesting that there's a, now a new concern to RDA money going outside of the Excel ratepayer territory. Uh, Representative Leganius and others, there's been several projects in the past that actually you voted for to do that with. Uh, and that's okay because I know the benefit has to be, the benefit is for uh, Excel ratepayers. And sometimes projects that are outside of a area, uh, even projects that were funded under the DFL in Iowa, uh, can actually benefit ratepayers. So I'm okay with that. Uh, what I'm not okay with is somehow this new standard that is attempting to be developed today. But regardless of my personal opinions or the procedure that I followed to send this memo, um, I sent it to them. I promised them I'd do that. I'm following through on this promise. And my promise is backed up by a majority of last year's uh, members of the House and Senate who took these exact same programs out last time. So I felt I was doing that on behalf of uh, committing what, uh, communicating what a majority of the House and the majority of the Senate had already accomplished. I don't think there's anything extraordinary about that. And, I suspect there won't be anything extraordinary about that going forward. Yeah, Mr. Uh, Representative Carlson. Mr. Chairman, you know, we often uh, debate what legislative intent may have been, but, uh, you know, uh, I'm not challenging your right to move an amendment here. What I am challenging is the expectation that you shared with us at the beginning of your presentation of the amendment that simply because you as a committee chair, one member of the House, interpreting legislative intent sends a memo and expects a commission to follow uh, the direction of that uh, memo. I view that as kind of extraordinary, and that's my point. Representative Guinness. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Since my name was mentioned again, I actually don't object to some of the XL money being used outside of XL territory. What I had said is some folks hold that very dear. Um, I can see real advantages to XL uh, folks 
to have some things go on statewide. So that's not my objection. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the A-10 amendment say aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Motion prevails, the A-10 amendment is adopted. <laughs> Uh, next up, I think we'll take the A-12 amendment. Uh, Representative Torkelson moves the A-12 amendment. Representative Torkelson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. This is in uh, regard to a project that uh, was passed last year. It's a project uh, that uh, is uh, studying the possible optimization of local mechanical pond wastewater treatment plants. Um, as you know, we've been talking quite a bit about uh, these treatment plants during this legislative session and I went to PCA and asked them if there's any way we could speed up the project uh, to get results sooner. Uh, they came back with a proposal to me uh, that would cost $103,000 in order to take one year's time off of this project. I feel this is a sensible thing to do given the current situation with the need for uh, wastewater treatment plant investments. Uh, this. This study really is looking at the existing infrastructure to determine whether or not uh, the in existing infrastructure can be tuned up and utilized more effectively so that we get uh, reasonable results uh, with a smaller investment. In a discussion of the Torkelson A-12 amendment, uh, Representative Liebley. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And um, I had um, just wanted to be recognized even on the previous amendment just to ask usually the author of the bill is asked to comment on these amendments and since Representative Heinzman is actually carrying the bill and since he's also a member of the commission I I guess I my question would just be to get his comment on these amendments uh, before they're voted on. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry Representative Liebling if you had tried to get recognition That's before okay. I hadn't noticed that you had raised yeah. your hand. I guess I, I figured that if Representative Heinzman had something to say he would uh, made uh, it known, uh, but uh, Representative Heinzman, do you have an opinion on the A-12 amendment? Uh, actually, there was there was a comment that I would like to make, so I appreciate the opportunity, <laughs> Representative Ludley. Um, the, the projects, as uh, Representative Garofalo had suggested, were, were uh, removed in the previous bill, and we are talking about them again in the previous amendment. So uh, I, I agree with Representative Garofalo's uh, concern over them continuing to be there and I was actually very happy to see that there might be an alternative path and uh, I thought that the opportunity to utilize those resources was was uh, was a good but was a good option any other discussion to the a12 amendment seen not all in favor of the a12 amendment say aye. Aye. aye aye opposed motion prevails the a12 amendment is adopted uh, um, next members will take up the uh, A18-0957 amendment. Uh, what about um, we just did it. Representative Fabian is uh, not here. Um, uh, Chair, I'll move the A18-0957 amendment. Uh, this is an amendment or piece of legislation that people have seen and been voted on before. Uh, this was part of the uh, uh, environment finance bill, uh, and this relates to a project up in the Alexandria area. My understanding is that uh, Lake Winona is the, uh, the lake to which the uh, Alexandria wastewater facility discharges, and that years ago there was a lot of uh, load put on that lake, and as they're looking at uh, rebuilding their uh, sewage plant, they're trying to uh, come up with a different, less costly way of uh, meeting some of the standards uh, uh, for that lake. And they've uh, done some research and are uh, looking at doing uh, alum treatment, uh, carp removal, and other things to try to deal with some of the uh, issues uh, with that lake. And this would be funding for that. Again, this was uh, previously approved in the Environment Finance Bill. Uh, Representative uh, Wagenius. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I actually liked uh, alternatives, um, and uh, the carp removal one is particularly appealing to me. However, it's not appropriate to write a permit uh, in a bill like this, or in a bill. Uh, writing permits is for the executive branch. 
uh, not the legislative branch. But more specifically about this permit, uh, while it does describe a process, there is no guarantee that, um, and then you, you can look on line 2.3, uh, if, if they go through the process, it ensures that the a district can achieve compliance, but that doesn't necessarily mean the outcome for reducing what needs to be reduced has happened. So then you look at, at the alternative, and um, so there are two, two ways that this could be approached. And again, and again we don't have a, an, uh, an outcome that is, is necessarily workable. And you can see on line 2.24, that the district's responsibility um, for management of lake activities terminates on the completion of the activities. But here's the problem with that. If the CARP um, helps solve a problem, which I hope they do by reducing the phosphorus, keeping CARP out of a lake is really difficult, particularly if the lake is next to wetlands where carp will go for the winter or through culverts, and this is a, develop, a developed area, so there are lots of culverts, uh, lots of sewer lines. Uh, so this is not a problem solver. This is, um, it's, I think it's wholly inappropriate to put this in here. Now, I know we don't have the votes to stop it, but I do want to be on the record uh, for saying that it's inappropriate to put a permit in legislation, and particularly one that doesn't have outcomes. Uh, Representative Heinzman, would you like to comment to the amendment? Uh, Mr. Chair, if it's all right, uh, Marty uh, Seckert is here, and he could uh, speak more specifically to that question, I believe, Representative. Oh, all right, uh, sure. If we have someone that wants to give testimony, we'll be glad to have them come forward. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chair. Mr. Cipher, welcome to the Committee on Ways and Means. Thanks for having me, Mr. Chair. I'll be very brief. Um, Representative Wilgini has had some good questions, and I just want to uh, briefly touch on this. This was heard in both the House and Senate, uh, passed unanimously. Uh, Representative Wilgini and uh, Baker and Garofalo heard this bill. It was a Representative Paul Anderson bill. Um, this language was worked out with the Pollution Control Agency in the meantime since we were in the uh, Jobs Committee. The reason it was there is it was a Public Facilities Authority grant that Mr. Freeman's agency would have done. He has since told us he did not want to be involved in that, so the Board of uh, Water and Soil Resources is the, is the uh, granting organization. Um, to represent Wagenius's question, if you look at page one, line uh, lines one point two three and two four, um, if the um, carp management and alum treatment are not successful, uh, there ironically are carp barriers that um, are new that the U of M has worked on. Ironically, I believe funded from a previous LCCMR project, I think maybe when you were involved, Representative Wagenius, that they are looking at utilizing because this is very tricky with carp moving from place to place. Um, this is the best language we could come up with uh, because we have to follow federal law under um, regional EPA. Uh, they have to grant approval of this. The reason it's before you today is that when we worked out all of the details with the Pollution Control Agency and the consulting engineers, the data that we received to make sure that this worked for pollutant reduction, we were already past kind of the deadlines and so forth for, for LCCMR consideration. Um, but this does potentially save the taxpayers $14 million because if this works as the consulting engineers and the pollution control agencies think that it may, um, this will reduce the phosphorus uh, in Lake Winona, Lake Agnes area that is in the LASD district, and that would preclude a need to trigger PSIG grants uh, and other funding sources. So you, you would save $14 million, and, they, and the consulting engineers believe this may be an additional pollutant reduction below what uh, the facility uh, reconstruction would be. But if this does not work, line 1.24, uh, 
it will revert back to them having to construct a new facility. So the, the outcome is we are going to have the pollution reduction that is in their permit. Um, the PCA did work with us, and I want to compliment them for working with us in this um, uh, and getting the language assembled. And um, I can stand for any questions you might have. Uh, any questions for Mr. Seifert? Uh, thank you, Mr. Seifert. Uh, it, it is in the Senate LCCMR bill as well, Mr. Chair. All right. Other discussion to the A18-0957 amendment. See no discussion. All in favor of the amendment, say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Motion prevails. The amendment is adopted. Okay. Uh, finally, uh, we have the uh, A11 amendment. Uh, the chair will move the A11 amendment. And uh, what the A11 amendment does, members, is it just uh, tries to prod the LCCMR into uh, recommending additional uh, money uh, for uh, public facilities authority funding. You know, we've had a number of uh, hearings in this committee where we have heard about the need for wa more wastewater treatment funding across the state, uh, more PFA funding across the state, and uh, that is not something that's uh, prohibited by LCCMR funding, although we've not really done it in the past. And so this would be an amendment that uh, simply tries to uh, prod the LCCMR into doing some more of this without actually uh, specifically appropriating money or requiring them to do so. Uh, is there any discussion to the A11 amendment? Representative Wagenius. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I, I'm, I know this language is going to go back in, and, and it was in the LCCMR bill, and it's appropriate that it go back in. Um, but I would caution the expectation that um, both sections, A and B, actually work. Um, the section B is loans from the corpus. That's very specifically allowed in the constitutional language. And it seems to me LCCMR should consider it. The legislature can consider it. It's very specific in the, in the Constitution. Grants, however, are entirely a different matter. And uh, we had discussions in LCCMR uh, about the likelihood of that, if that goes to a court, that a court would find that, um, that grants from the trust fund um, are not constitutional. I, I suspect at this hour of the night, nobody wants to get into that constitutional discussion, and it is for a court. Uh, but it is my expectation that a court would say that part is not constitutional. Excuse me. Um, well, G. Representative uh, Wagenius, I, um, you know, you're so pessimistic about, uh, about what might happen on these amendments. You keep saying you know they're going to go on. But uh, anyway, we'll uh, have the discussion. Uh, Representative Garofalo. Well, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, I want to agree with my colleague, Representative Wagenius, on this one, maybe not for the same reasons. But members, you'll notice on page one of the amendment, uh, line 13, this is an expenditure from the PFA, the Public Facilities Authority, which unless there's been a new directive by the speaker, uh, that finance account resides in the Job Growth Energy Affordability Policy and Finance Committee. And uh, Representative Heinzman, maybe you could answer a question for me. Has this language been reviewed by my committee? Or is that a, the committee that I chair? Or has it been? Uh, uh, Representative Heinzman. Thank you, Mr. Chair and uh, Representative Garofalo. Uh, no. Okay, so uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, you know I like you, you're a good guy, but I'm looking around the table at my fellow committee chairs who chair other committees, and if you have a jurisdictional issue that uh, comes up, you, you know how to vote. Um, so I would respectfully, while well, I like the author of the amendment, and maybe there even some merit for the substance of it, I would ask for a no vote on the amendment. Okay. Representative Hausman. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I was just curious because it has a specific dollar amount and there uh, is a reference several times to uh, it, that it only relates to towns with a population under 5,000, how that uh, was arrived at, and do we know how many towns under 5,000, and is that a fair distribution of funds with that kind of limitation? Um, and I, I don't know how that math was done. Well, Representative Houseman, I guess I can't tell you offhand how many towns there are underneath 5,000, but there are... I'm sure some hundreds of them, and we have traditionally had a cutoff in the state 
uh, for uh, allocations of towns under 5,000 if you look at some things like uh, O's transportation funding, for example. And so I think it's a reasonable uh, uh, population number for which to have a cutoff. And Mr. Chair, I wasn't necessarily referencing the, the cutoff for population, but the dollar amount that would be limited to them. So is that a fair distribution of funds, given the fact you're from St. Cloud, which is over 5,000? <laughs> well, I, um, are, are, are you saying, I'm, I guess I have to ask what your question is, Representative Hollis, are, are you saying that 10 million is too much or too little? Don't know, because I, I just didn't know if, does somebody know how the math was done? Was it done with the idea that you want to be fair to everyone across the state? No. Well, I would, I would not I, know that. I always want to be fair to everyone across the state. That's and so uh, I guess, Representative Houseman, as you see, it's really just permissive language, and it's trying to uh, prod the uh, LCCMR into considering uh, funding some money for wastewater treatment systems. Uh, I think there's a great need, like I said, in this area. We haven't been using this uh, resource in the past, and so we're, uh, with this amendment, just trying to get people to uh, consider using it. Mr. Uh, Representative Garofalo. Uh, Mr. Chairman, Representative Hausman, I think those are excellent questions, and it's exactly why we should have a hearing on this matter in the Jobs Committee before adopting it in this committee. Any other discussion? Uh, See no further discussion. All in favor of the A11 amendment, say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. 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 <laughs> the motion is not prevailed. <laughs> the amendment is not adopted. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and Mr. Chairman, and, and <laughs> Representative Carlson. And Representative Garofalo accomplished that without even sending in a memo. <laughs> Well, see you though. See you. There you go, Representative Oginius. Ye of little faith. <laughs> All right. I see no other amendments. Uh, discussion to the bill. Any discussion to House File 3352 as amended? I uh, see no discussion. The chair will renew his motion that House File 3352 as amended be referred to the General Register. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Most prevails, House File 3352 is referred to the General Register. Uh, say, before we uh, uh, end uh, today, uh, members, I do want to uh, uh, give thanks to some people because this is likely our last meeting of the session. Uh, not of the year, as I mentioned. We'll have one in late November or December to review the November forecast, but probably won't be having one uh, in the next few days uh, before the session ends. So I want to uh, uh, thank a number of people. I'd like to uh, thank uh, our uh, DFL and uh, Republican research team, uh, Dan Sullivan with DFL Research, Dave Sullivan, excuse me, uh, Bill Glahn, Republican Research. I want to uh, thank Colby Sullivan, who's uh, done such a great job uh, being our counsel and uh, putting together amendments on the fly when we've got to uh, call on him to do that. And I want to thank uh, Bill Marks, uh, who uh, I said when we... Uh, eventually renovate this building someday we could sort of like you know have a little front of it uh, be you know part of you know like a sort of a mount rushmore but we could stick <laughs> bill marks up there instead he's, you know sort of an institution around here and uh if uh, if he ever does retire i know we'll miss him uh terribly but uh, we're very glad to have uh his uh help i want to thank uh uh, Gene Coddington, who's uh, been such a great uh, legislative assistant for me, and I want to thank uh, Harry Kennedy, who has stepped in so capably uh, this year, uh, in the last year after Craig Stone was promoted. And finally, I want to thank our pages, and if they could come forward, we actually uh, have something for uh, Santa, Amit, and Becca. You already gave it to them? Oh, oh, I thought you <laughs> Come on, anyway. Get on camera. Oh, we thought we were holding those presents for you. All right. Well, anyway, that's okay. We'll just... We'll put them on the fridge tonight, so... All right. Thank you all Thank much you guys. for all you've done. Uh, they got a little packet which included them standing in front of a huge mound of uh, dead trees that have been turned into paper, which uh, happens uh, regularly around here. So uh, thank you very much for your help. And um, with that, I do want to maybe, if I can, have the uh, people who are on the conference committee uh, 
Representative Pulowski, Loon, Garofalo, and Torkelson, uh, maybe just come up to my office for a short meeting here just to update them on some things. Uh, with that, uh, thank you again for uh, everything. Representative Carl. Well, I didn't want to interrupt your thank yous, but I do have a question when you're done with that. Okay, I'm done with that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I had a uh, member of our caucus come up today and ask if I had the uh, targets for the conference committee, the different articles or the overall targets, and I said I did not. And uh, we did have a conversation uh, about that. And so uh, if you could share that with um, our caucus, what your various targets are, as well as the tails. Okay, well, I, I'm sorry, Representative Carlson. I thought, you know, we're all getting a tremendous number of emails at this time as we end up in session. I'm, I had thought that we had sent you an email on that, but um, I will make sure that, that I, I get them to you because yeah. they've, if you they've don't mind been publicly released. It, uh, yeah, I can uh, resend it. I'd, I don't have a hard copy with me here, but I'd be happy to get it. I did check, uh, Mr. Chairman, after she asked me the question on the House floor, and I didn't find an email, no. All right. Yeah. We'll, we'll so maybe something happened, but I told her that I would um, follow that up and see if we could uh, get those uh, targets. Okay. In fact, actually what I'll do is when I go up to my office here, I'll give uh, some to Representative Pulowski. I'll run off a hard copy, and he can give it to you. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Okay. And uh, I do want to thank uh, – it's uh, – been a pleasure serving on the committee with all of you, uh, Republican and Democratic members. I've enjoyed uh, having you as the minority lead, Representative Carlson, and I uh, thank you. appreciate uh, serving with everyone and all your service. So uh, thank, thank you, you very, very much. Uh, with that, the meeting's adjourned.